did Russian President Vladimir Putin really want Donald Trump to win the 2016 presidential election? That was Putin talking to a reporter in Helsinki back in July. A couple of weeks later, U.S. security leaders gathered together for an unannounced briefing at the White House to warn the American people. Russia attempted to interfere with the last election and continues to engage in malign influence operations to this day. Now the U.S. Department of Justice has charged a 44-year-old Russian woman who they allege had a plan to create conflict by leveraging hot-button issues like gun rights and race relations and to spread distrust for U.S. political candidates before the midterms. Why is this so important? Because two years after this... I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. America is getting ready to head to the polls again, this time to decide to either keep or replace their state and federal representatives in the middle of the presidential term. This is called the midterms. And according to every U.S. intelligence agency, Russia did in fact meddle in the 2016 election. Paul Wood is a BBC World Affairs correspondent who has been investigating Russia's role in American politics. Back in January 2017, he broke the news of a secret Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act warrant to investigate allegations of Kremlin money going into the Trump campaign. I first heard the words Trump and Russia coupled back in March 2016. Paul was told the Russians were allegedly using money and hacking to meddle in the election. But hang on a minute. The U.S. is a superpower. It's home to arguably the center of the world's technology. So if Russia is meddling, why is the U.S. having such a hard time fighting back against this? People in the tech world have told me that they're frustrated. They say the U.S. government is relying on Silicon Valley to save America. So far, 23 Russian nationals have been indicted for alleged meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential elections. They're accused of hacking and manipulating social media. And now, 32 more Facebook accounts and pages have been taken down in the run-up to the midterms, which are thought to also have links to the Kremlin. Here's what Sheryl Sandberg of Facebook had to say. It's clear that whoever set up these accounts went to much greater lengths to obscure their true identities than the Russian-based Internet Research Agency, IRA, did in the run-up to the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So it appears as if they're getting more sophisticated and they don't have a political preference. What we see is the Russians are looking for every opportunity, regardless of party, regardless of, of uh, uh, whether or not it, it applies to the election. Uh, to continue their pervasive efforts to undermine our fun fundamental values. The BBC's security correspondent Gordon Carrera was the first to break the news that the U.S. intelligence community was expecting Russia to interfere in the midterms. The Russians are employing very clever techniques, techniques of hybrid warfare below the threshold of war, employing a wide range of cyber hacking, cyber espionage, social media, these are uh, uh, challenges which um, cross boundaries for the U.S. government and U.S. intelligence community. So, for instance, you know, the CIA and NSA are charged with dealing with foreign um, uh, challenges and threats and the FBI domestically, but this is a, a, something which crosses that boundary. So I think there's a problem for the U.S. institutionally and bureaucratically in organizing itself to try and fight this kind of interference. So the Russians have effectively tapped into one of America's weaknesses. I think a real challenge though for the US is coordination. When you have this many players in it, you need someone to say, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, and to put pressure on them to work together. That's what I understand talking to people close to American intelligence, that's what they're worried about, is that there isn't that leadership from the top. This is all starting to sound a bit like a spy novel, isn't it? Enter Christopher Steele, formerly of the British intelligence agency MI6. He was paid by a company hired by the Democrats in 2016 to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. The Steele dossier claimed that the Russian government had been handling Donald Trump for years, assisting him, supporting him. The dossier also claimed that they had compromising material on him. Paul first was given this document a month before Donald Trump's election. I first heard in October 2016 from a former member of the U.S. intelligence community that he'd been told by his East European, East European contacts that there was a sex blackmail tape of President Trump when he was a businessman visiting Russia. I've since heard from another source, somebody in a Russian criminal organization uh, of a tape. In fact, we have two sources in Russian criminal organizations 
one of whom has a lot of credibility with me because he was talking about these sex tapes giving very similar descriptions before the dossier was ever published. Now, of course, there is a very convincing alternative explanation for all this, which is that the Russian intelligence services decided to carry out provocatia, a fabricated piece of information designed to dismay and confuse the enemy. And they planted this story, and that's why we're hearing about it from multiple sources. Trump denies any sex tape exists. So was the dossier part of Putin's plan all along? Either way, the effects of Russia's alleged meddling goes beyond simply social media influencing and hacking. Russia has dominated the news agenda in the United States. Congressional inquiries into 2016 interference are looking more and more like a partisan circus and special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into possible Trump campaign collusion with Russia is still ongoing, which seems to be tying up the president's time on social media and putting him on the defensive. America has never seemed more divided, which looks like a victory for Russia. But this is not lost on lawmakers, especially Republican senator and former presidential candidate Marco Rubio. The nation continually debating these issues and divided over it. This is how you weaken an adversary from within. And then there was the summit in Helsinki, where Trump sided with the Russian president over his own intelligence community. At the press conference, Putin denied Russia ever had or would interfere in U.S. elections. My People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. 24 hours later, Trump changed his tune. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. A few days after the Helsinki summit, it was revealed by the New York Times that Trump knew all along about Putin's personal involvement in the 2016 interference. A few weeks before he took office, Donald Trump was briefed by his intelligence community, his soon-to-be intelligence community, about Putin's direct role in ordering the operation. A U.S. intelligence official who was serving at the time told me that the evidence that Trump was given about Putin's role and exactly where the directive and the, the tactics and the operations came from was overwhelming. But what's interesting is that Trump's reaction wasn't necessarily what he should do about this, but rather whether or not he should believe the intelligence. The source recalls Trump was taken aback by the level of detail the U.S. intelligence community had on Putin's inner circle. But he's denied all allegations, including the existence of Compromat. If they had it, it would have been out long ago. So do the Russians really have Compromat on Trump? Or does the mere rumor of its existence disrupt the political discourse? In more tangible terms, they're allegedly still meddling in U.S. politics. Midterm candidates say they have found hacking attempts, and tech companies say they have spotted and shut down fake accounts and fake websites. So the question as Americans head to the polls in November is, have the warnings of security leaders and social media executives made an impact on voters?